you got to trust the process always. I mean, that, I, I think that's one of the biggest, I'm still learning that lesson right. every day, but yeah. I'm a lot better about it. And then one day I, I kind of was like, you know what? I love 1010 wins. This is a really good job. I mean, I'm really lucky to be here. This is the number one news station in America. Consistently. I came from, and look where I came from. And I'm, I'm, you know, I've established my own name. And that was something else that the, my mentor at CNN had told me, CNN radio, um, Robert Garcia and Gary Baumgarten, who's still a, a news radio reporter in the market, um, he had said he had said to me, he goes, listen, you're trying to establish yourself in your name. He goes, if you're on radio, he goes, think of this. He goes, people will know you as Lisa Evers. They'll come to know your sensibility. They'll right. come to know what you stand for and what your point of view is, but they'll they're not going to associate you with your past until you know they they they're they've already known where you are now right because i was like how do i establish myself for where i'm at like how do i grow into what i'm becoming basically right. which was great great advice so i established myself as lisa evers i won an award for uh radio and television news directors it was very good i remember it took me a long time <laughs> To, to connect the dots between Lisa Evers and Lisa Sleeve. It took me a long yeah, time. Yeah, and I wasn't trying because to pull back on it. It was the medium of like, radio. Yeah, and right. it was also, it was just like, this is my transition, and this is, you know. Which was great. Muhammad Ali changed right. his name, and I'm like, yeah. I can do it. Th I can go back to my original name, my my maiden name. So anyway, so I, I had kind of given up a little bit because I had this one thing that I, I thought was for sure going to have, this radio thing. And then the guy and the guy who was going to hire me ends up getting fired. Which just happens a lot. Which happens a lot in TV. And then uh, Bob DeCastro, who, who's now in L.A., works in L.A. in TV, he was a reporter at Fox 5 at the time. He goes, you know, we're adding this 5 o'clock show. And we've got this news di news director. And he goes, he really likes this. Because I'm not the typical... You're, right. Typical, typical TV reporter by a long shot. I mean, you've you've got chops. I mean, literally, like <laughs> but it was literally. Like, you know, it's kind of I'm a, a little bit, a little bit a handful, <laughs> right. you know. So, um, so anyway, he said, you know, he really likes the street thing. He goes, why don't you? He goes, just give him a call. Right. So I'm like, uh, and I didn't have an agent at the time. I had been talking with an agent, but nothing was really happening. So I, um, I gave this guy a call, and it took a while. And then the demo I did for him, this guy on 42nd Street had gotten his throat slit from ear to ear. Really? So I said to him, I go, next time. so I did my TV stand up in a black leather jacket and on 40, 42nd Street. And I go, I go, um, yeah, and this is where so-and-so and this happened. And, and he got slipped from ear to ear, what they call a buck 50, because in prison it takes 150 <laughs> stitches to close it up. Right. The guy thought that was the most amazing thing. Right. It was cutting edge to him. He, he was... He thought I was cutting edge, so I'm like, um, so so I got the job, and then it was, he saw that by the time we made the demo tape, he saw the next day he called me and I called the agent that I had been talking to, and I'm like, will you represent me for this? And the guy goes, uh, yes, of course, and within three days I had a deal, which is pretty much unheard of. Well, like was, I had a contract. Was there was it was there growing pains growing into into that culture? Totally like, in the like TV. What? Like what? totally like they had. Well, he was. I mean, I had long I had long straight dark hair which is my natural color right. i had bangs yes um i was used to being out in radio like like hip-hop like hip-hop there was no you know we weren't videotaping the shows right. there was no people weren't you didn't have phones we have phones but we didn't have ca cameras on them right. so it wasn't like you're doing radio it's like ponytail jeans it's very relaxed it's totally relaxed right. you know it's like basically one step up from being in your crib and in terms of your you know yeah. how you dress you're comfortable you're comfortable and so that's how I had dressed. And then he's like, okay, well, you're here, and, you know, we need you to do this. And I was kind of like, like I said, I wasn't dressed in the most feminine because I'm right. out on the streets. Right. And I wasn't really, you know, I wasn't really trying to show anything off. You right. know, I was just trying to kind of blend a little bit. And um, he's like, yeah, and you need to wear, uh, yeah, you need to dress, you know, more form-fitting and this. And I'm going to get you a stylist, and we're going to do and what this. Do you, what do you think? Goes, I didn't hire. Is. He's like, I didn't hire Cher's daughter. He goes, <laughs> he goes I, did, I didn't hire Cher's daughter. He goes, but I do love the black leather jackets. Right, right, right. He goes, I want you in leather all the time. And um, he was a bit of a character, and, but it didn't phase me because right. you went along with because. It. But I've been in modeling, and, right. I, and, and anybody that's been in modeling, you you get a certain. You either you either can go one or two directions when you're modeling. You either you go into total freak out mode, where you're constantly totally paranoid about everything about how you look, or you go into um, where you 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 realize that you're you're a product. Right, and you're and there to perform. You either it's like game. a sand, you know it's like the deli. One right. day they want turkey, one day they want uh, chicken, the right. next day somebody wants roast beef, whatever it is. And if you're not that flavor, 
it's not personal. Right. It's, it's just it's what they don't want. Yeah, exactly. So I took I took it like that, and then um, I changed my hair. I changed you know changed the style of dress a little bit, and um, that that was it. And here you are. Yeah. Here, so you now we're in 2015. Yes. What are some of the things you want to talk about? You said you had so many things to talk well, about. Well, I think I think 2015, I think this is a tremendously exciting time for, for hip-hop. Okay. And there, there are people, and I'm sure you've interviewed them or talked with them and hear, the, hear it too, and they're like, oh, well, you know, the 90s, that was the golden era of hip-hop. I think 2015 is a golden era of hip-hop. I so? Because I think, I think the, the tremendous creativity, I think the international platform is huge, and I think that hip-hop can be a tremendous force for change. We started in 2011 what I call what we call Push for Peace with Cory Booker yes. in Newark. Yeah, we've yes. done the last the last two years, we, which we're going to do now annually, um, thanks to Eric Adams in Brooklyn, the, the Push for Peace. We've done it in the Bronx. We've... Um, you know, and it's it's a concept where we basically want to take this hashtag, push the number four piece, and have people just start using it and in their in their posts on Instagram and their posts on Twitter, posts on Facebook, and let's just put let's just put the idea out there. It's like it's a choice we can make. We can choose to be peaceful and not just not I'm not just talking about the gun violence that we have that still plagues us, even though the murder rate and the crime rate overall is down. Right. But just but even the violence, like when you see somebody and, and we've all seen this, you know, you see somebody being being really really horrible to their child in public. Yes. And it's like, well, I'm not telling you how to discipline your child, but you're why humiliate them in front of everybody else? You know, it's like where are you in your life that you yeah have to do, do that yeah do we to, need to, to scar that right, child? Right. So it's like push for peace, or it's like, and just even when we're dealing with each other, it's like, do we need to be that harsh? You know, is it is it like at that? And I, and I really kind of started looking at that concept, and I'm just like, this this is something hip hop. We have the power to do this. You know, we you look at the the different trends in hip hop now and. The, the way the music is and the way it's now acceptable for, for big name artists who are platinum selling Grammy winning artists to, who are real quote unquote real men to talk about their feelings mm -hmm. you know so it's like yes we can acknowledge it you're a real man you're a real man if you're a whole man and you're acknowledging your feelings and don't we all feel better when we're at peace I mean I hear these stories I'm going to interview these people interview these these guys at, that you know, age eleven is when they first joined a gang, and then it's a life of stress. By the time they're nineteen, they're so burnt out. It's like they've been in live growing up in Afghanistan. Right, right, right. PTSD. You know? is, is yeah, PTSD. and what, it's real. How do you feel though about the? It, it seems pretty stagnant, particularly in hip hop, um, with regard to the role of women and the imagery of women and the roles that women play in hip hop. You know, I just did a story on that for Fox Five. Right. With the with with women in hip hop, mm -hmm. and I and I think there's I think there's tremendous room for improvement. So I think there room. needs to be right. much more of women's voices, but I also think it reflects where women are right now too. I don't think I mean if you're a stripper and that's what you want to do, I think that should be your choice. Right. I'm not one of these women that says you know everyone's got to get a college education or everyone has to you know wear a skirt a pencil skirt and work in an office. You know, it's it's it should be a woman's choice. Right. But I think also I think for a lot of a lot of the young girls now there's a tremendous amount of confusion too. It's like Particularly with technology and, and with the technology Insta Instagram and the and Instagram models and the whole the, the way to get validation the, through your sexuality. Yeah, the way to get imagery. attention. Right. And and hip hop gets blamed for a lot of that, but I think a lot of it is is our broader culture. It's, it's society and, as a whole. Yeah, We've and always the, uh, and the whole social media thing right. makes it so much more instant, but you have like I had a teacher, um, we had, we we had a teacher uh, that was on Street Soldiers on Hot 97 not too long ago. He was telling me they're dealing with six, uh, uh, six and seventh graders making sex tapes oh. on their phones because oh, this is gee. the way to get attention. Right, right, right. So I'm like, it, it, I think, and I think also too for parents, you know, I, I I don't believe in the blame game because I don't think it gets us anywhere. I really don't. You know, you know that old saying that, that that they they always have is like you're pointing a finger, you got four, four pointing point back, back at, at you. you. Right. It's like what are we what are we really doing? Right. And I and I think it's like if you're reinforcing your child, or we're reinforcing the kids in our community, or we as women are reinforcing our girls that they're of value as they are, no matter what their hair looks like, no matter what the texture of their hair, what they look like, no matter what their body type is, just for merely being alive and who they are. That spirit, that human spirit that they have, they're of value. These things aren't going to be as big an issue, you know.